to a certain arrangement of on and off to remember that Chinese character at that point in your document. Or it translates to these zeros and ones if you're to just look at it in binary. So 8 bits is one byte. If we add 1,000 and it's 1,024 because of that, we had 1,024 bytes. What's a kilo? It's a thousand, right? So that's close enough that we call it a kilobyte. And if we had 1,024 uh, kilobytes, that's equal to one megabyte. And if we had 1,024 megabytes, that's equal to one gigabyte. And if we had 1,024 gigabytes, that's equal to one terabyte. See the pattern? So if I have a 64 gigabyte, gigabyte SD card, that's equal to, instead of gigabytes, I can do 64 gigabytes times 1,024 megabytes is one gigabyte, right? So that cancels, and it's 64 times 1,024. And then one megabyte is equal to 1,024 kilobytes. And then, I'm just continuing my math down here. And then one, that one kilobyte is equal to 1,024 bytes. And uh, one byte is equal to 8 bits. So if I do 64 times 1,024 times 1,024 times 1,024 times 8, I know how many single zeros and ones my 64 gigabyte SD card can store. I know how many circuits are on that card that can go into an on-off state. Wow. And that number works out to 64 times 1,024. Is it three times? Yeah. One, two, three, times eight. That number works out to 549 billion, 755 million, 813,888 single zeros and ones, or, or circuits, actual switches, just like that light switch back there, switches that could be in an on off state on something that's the size of my thumbnail. And it can be instantly checked and changed. Like right now, that's recording HD. HD. HD is high definition. That's equal to a res resolution of uh, 1920 by 1080. Okay? And so that means a picture in a computer is made up of dots. And uh, 1920 by 1080 is landscape. And it means there's 1,920 dots this way. But they're so close to each other, you can't tell they're dots. You're too far away. Just like that wall right there, you can't tell that wall is made up of dots. Or this wall, it's molecules. There's actually more space right here between the molecules than there are molecules. I think. I'm not a physicist. Right? But it's just a bunch of molecules. It's dots. But when we look at it from far enough away, we don't see the molecules. And they're compacted close enough, we don't see that the molecules. We just see a wall. Same thing, an image has all these dots. 1920. And then there's 1,080 of those lines, all those dots, right? And that's what makes my image. I'm tired of drawing. Is it mind-blowing? See, simple in theory, complex in implementation. 
And for each of these dots, we need to store color information. And that is known as uh, bit depth or color depth. So for one dot, it has a bit depth or a color depth. If we use one bit for each dot, and instead of calling them dots, I'm going to call them by their real name, which is pic picture element. It's an element which makes up a picture. And I'm going to abbreviate that once more and call it a pixel. That's what they're called. Right, so each of these is a pixel. Each of those is a pixel. Each of those dots is a pixel. And for each pixel, we have a bit depth or color depth. We need to store color information for each dot. What color is each pixel? We need to store that color information. If we use one bit to store the color information for each pixel, how many possible colors can each pixel be? We're using one bit to store the color information. If we have one bit, how many messages can we store? We have one, two. Yeah, we can store two. It's a porch light. We have one porch light, on or off. All right, one bit is a binary digit, which means it could be zero or one. We could store two colors. Black or green? Welcome to the 1980s. Your monitor is black or green. Your video games, black or green. That's what you're seeing. On your screen, you see either black or green. Old school computers, black or green. The bit depth, the color depth was one bit, which means each pixel can either be one of two colors. If we have a bit depth, color depth of two, how many possible colors can we store for each pixel? Four. If we have a bit depth, color depth of 16, how many possible colors can we store? Give me the formula. 2 to the power of 16. What's the number? It's 2, two carré, which is like shift 8, I think. Oh, you can just do it right up here in your web browser. Just launch a new tab and do 2, and then push uh, shift 6, and then uh, 16, and enter. It's 65,536 possible colors. If our bit depth, if we're storing 16 bits for each pixel. So what's 1920 by 1080? You're going to be my person to do the math. 1920 by 1080. Two million seventy three thousand six hundred. Two million seventy three thousand six hundred pixels. Two million seventy three thousand six hundred pixels. Now multiply that by sixteen. We're going to go for a bit depth of sixteen, which means for each pixel, it could be one of about sixty five thousand possible colors. 33 million, 177,600. 33 million, how much? 177,600. Okay, so for one frame of video, we're storing 33 million, 177,600 bits. So that many zeros and ones circuits are going into an on-off state to store the data, the information, for one frame in a video. In North America, we shoot NTSC, which is a video standard, which means that we're shooting at 29.97 frames per second. Multiply this number by 29.97 frames per second. We 
We got into E. Seven. Nine, seven. Say, give me the numbers. Uh, yeah, I That's it. 994332672. 994,332,672 bits for one second of the video. What was that number again? That number is 549,755,000. Wait, what? Oh, wait. So for one second of video, we're storing 994,332,672 bits. Holy crap! For one second in that little machine, that is so much like circuits going into on off states and just staying that way. Amazing. One of the greatest feats, <coughs> right up there with the invention of the tire. Greatest feats in human engineering ever. <laughs> Nobody thought that was strange, right up there with the invention of the tire. <laughs> the tire is amazing. <laughs> like from an engineering perspective, the tire is an incredible achievement. Not that I know why, I've just heard people say that. <laughs> It's all repeated. So divide this number by 994332, and we'll know how many seconds we can shoot before we fill up our SD card. So 549-755-813-888. Nine nine four three three two six seven two. Five hundred fifty two point nine one. That's rounded. And then divide that by sixty. So I can shoot 9.22 minutes on a 64 gigabyte SD card. That's not right. Because it told me I had about six hours that I could shoot on that. So if this calculation gives us nine minutes, and in reality it's six hours, that is an increase in uh, Six three hundred sixty three hundred sixty divided by about ten is a thirty six times increase. So I'm able to store actually thirty six times more than that. And the way I'm able to store thirty six times more than that is that we're throwing away a tremendous amount of data. So we're not storing at a bit depth, color depth of sixteen. We have some compression going on and you know, there's algorithms that could say, hey, you know what, starting here to there, it's all blue. I don't have to store the data for each of those. I know that from this point to this point, it's that color. And I'll just store that, and then I can just recreate that. And so there's compression algorithms. MP4 is a compression algorithm. If you shoot something, a still image as raw, you're saving all the zeros and ones for every bit, every pixel. But if you shoot as JPEG, you're throwing stuff away. And then smaller file size. So look, this is really cool, measuring bits. Getting down to the zeros, ones, the circuits that are in a state of on or off. 
And you know how computers work. They run on electricity. Electricity has two discrete states. Computers like your porch light on Halloween. What? Run on electricity, two discrete states, on and off. It means one thing if it's on, another thing if it's off. That's a coding scheme, right? Instead of saying on and off, we could just abbreviate that as zero and one. A zero and one is a binary digit or a bit. We can measure bits. One bit is a bit. Eight bits is a byte. 1,024 bytes is a kilobyte. 1,024 kilobytes is a megabyte. 1,024 megabytes is a gigabyte. 1,024 gigabytes is a terabyte. Two to the end tells me, you know, if I have this many circuits, how many messages I can store. You learned about HD is 1920 by 1080 resolution. You learned about pixels. You learned about bit depth, color depth is how many zeros and ones are storing color information for each pixel. This is resolution, 1920 by 1080, we call that resolution. Aspect ratio is, you know, this would be a 16-9 aspect ratio. It's 16 over for every nine down. Gives us the letterbox relationship. So you have resolution and aspect ratio. Those are words you should know. I'll put that in red here. Resolution and an aspect ratio. Sixteen nine. How many people feel totally overloaded and confused? Like so overwhelmed. Like, oh god, I just don't get it. How many people feel like I mostly got that, but I'm a little bit eh. How many people feel like I already knew all that? Yeah. <laughs> you all know more than 99% of humanity now. About how computers work. I just made that statistic up. <laughs> you feel good, right? But I'm guessing 7 billion people, most of them don't understand this. And computers are always an area where you're operating on the edge of the unknown, and there's a lot I don't know. So the implementation is simple. No, the theory is simple, the implementation is complex. But it's also amazing. It's like, wow, it's amazing. Simple in theory. Hey, it's Port Side and Halloween. Storing the code it means something. The circuit's in this state or that state. So we had five generations of computers, and I guess that's kind of relevant to talk about. And uh, the first generation is characterized by a vacuum tube. I don't know how you spell vacuum. You can help me. Is it one C or two? And two U's? Yeah. That's the weirdest word. So we had vacuum tubes storing our on off state. And the first. The first computer, the ENIAC, had 18,000 vacuum tubes. Vacuum tubes ran hot, they were warm. Bugs would fly in, die next to a vacuum tube, and short out the computer. So they'd have to go debug the computer. Is that True story. Is that where debugging That's where debugging comes from. <laughs> He actually pulled the bugs out. There's a lady, Grace Hopper, who was in the military and worked on these machines and one of the original programmers. And uh, you could type in Grace Hopper debug, and it'll bring up a page from her log where it's like pulled a bug out of the computer and it's taped in there. What was her name again? Grace Hopper. She also famously said, uh, um, you could always ask for forgiveness. Which means just go ahead and do it. You can always ask for forgiveness. She's a firecracker. Go get her. And then Gen 2 was characterized by a transistor. So circuit switch, transistor, you'll hear that. Those were smaller, ran cooler. 
So a vacuum tube looked kind of like that, and a transistor looked like this. <laughs> you know? These burned out, they're kind of like light bulbs. Those didn't. This is just something that could hold a circuit in an on-off on state. And then we had a Gen 3, which is an integrated well, it's a chip, which is also known as a silicon wafer, which is also known as an integrated circuit. And that's like this big. And about that flat. And, uh, just looking something up. And this uh, holds today two billion six hundred million of these are crammed onto something that size. Yeah. So literally the size of your pinky fingernail. There's 2.6 billion circuits in an on that could be put into an on-off state. Holy majoli. And so they make that out of silicon, which is made out of sand, which is what we also make glass out of, which is also what we make fake breasts out of. Amazing substance. Gave us fake breasts, integrated <laughs> circuits. Wow. And windows, and sand. And silicon is good for construction. <laughs> Chip, silicon wafer integrated circuit. Intel stands for integrated electronics. Most people think it's just like, oh, they named their company Intel because intelligence. Well, that's a nice association for the company. But Intel stands for integrated electronics, right? The chip manufacturer Intel. And they make integrated circuits. The first one in 1971 had uh, 2,300. So, 2,300, this is 1971, this is uh, 1944, and this is uh, 2011, that's the data I have for 11. So this is probably a lot higher now. I could do a quick search. 